What's up, everybody? Hey, this is Phil from Walmart, right? Lane Truck coming at you tonight. It is Friday night, my Thursday night. Tomorrow's my go home day. I'm still debating. Do I extend? So I'm gonna make a quick phone call in the morning. I gotta see what they give me for tomorrow and go from there. If I get something that's gonna take all day, uh, then I'm might not extend but if I get something that's gonna end my day kind of quick then I'll definitely extend um, because right now I'm at like 20 20 hours left on my 70 so depending if they give me a 12 hour day or 14 hour day then I probably can't extend because I don't leave about six to seven hours for Sunday but if if it's something that only takes me 10 hours then I might extend for Sunday that gives me 10 hours for Sunday even if I have eight hours so I just got to make a phone call to Sacramento find out if they're actually gonna need me and then do the extension so they up the ante on the extension bonus the uh, previous at our location was $175 plus a layover fee or layover amount fee uh, layover amount of $42 so brought it up to you know two two seventeen I think it is what it came out to now it's they added another hundred onto it so it's 275 plus your lay layover um, so it brings it up to like 317 and that's before you even start your day so why not? It's 317 extra dollars. Uh, yeah, my day, my day, my day. I started in Nyack, Nyack. I went to West Sac. West Sac, there was four pallets. Four pallets, got it off relatively easy, relatively quick. Um, got out of there. Moved on to San Ramon. San Ramon, we had 14 pallets for San Ramon. However, when I arrived there, I filmed before uh, that location uh, in a previous video. Um, you'll just have to go back and, and look, but um, there's me backing into that location. Uh, today, I pulled around the corner and Sierra Pacific was there and a Walmart driver from Sacramento was also there uh, dropping off. So waiting on uh, them to finish unloading the Walmart uh, trailer and Sierra Pacific was there but they were off to the side uh, probably still could have got through um, if the Walmart driver wasn't there so I had to wait for the Walmart driver then we got that going then it just seemed to take it took a little longer than I would like it have taken um, for the location I mean I, I had to take a meal so I took a meal so I was there about an hour or so total with my meal but I think it still could have been done a little, a little more productive. Anyway, from San Ramon, I went to Livermore. Livermore is about 12 miles away from San Ramon, and it's off of uh, 580, the 580. So on my way there, I hear on the radio the traffic report saying that there's an accident on the 580. Uh, 205 interchange on the other side of the Altamont, but it was backing up the Altamont and they said to Vasco well I got off at Livermore Boulevard and it was backed up all the way to there so I Went in got my 10 pallets unloaded at the store Then I came out and I was gonna look at how the flow of traffic was going eastbound on 580 because I got to head back to McCarran. So I looked at the traffic flowing eastbound and it wasn't flowing very well. I live over there. I know how bad it can get. So I elected to go 580 west, get on 680, go north, and take 680 to 80, 
and that was the wrong choice. I won't do that again. I know better. 680, there's just too many at that time, around 3, 3.30, on a Friday, people are getting off. Don't people work till 5 anymore? 9 to 5, you know, the Dolly Parton song, Banker's Hours, 9 to 5. Don't people work till 5 anymore? It's really upsetting. But anyway, so everybody's on the freeway because it's Friday and they're got off early. And so anyway, so it backs up at different locations throughout there. Then it backs up through Fairfield. Then it backs up through Vacaville. Then it backs up through Dixon. Then it backs up through Davis. I know this. And I probably should have just took the Altamont 580 East and, and took the lick going across one, one length of traffic rather than four banks of traffic that just seemed to take forever. And my clock is just ticking. Tick, 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 tick. And I really wanted to get back here. I wanted to get a load and get going again. You guys know me. I like to go. But the clock is ticking. And it's saying, Phil, you need another meal. You need to take another meal before 6.50. So I had to stop in the West Sac area, take my second meal, and then get back on rope. While I was sitting there and <laughs> taking my meal, I made the decision that I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this. No, not done with Walmart. I'm done driving today, meaning when I get to McCarran, I'm done. I'm not going to take a load. I'm not going to try to get as far as I can get. Um, I'm going to adjust my ETD right now. And I'm going to say I'm not available till tomorrow morning. At which time I'll have 11 hours of drive time. And 20 hours on my 70. Think I got a phone call? You think somebody's blowing up my phone going, what is he doing? Who does he think he is? No. I mean, I really wouldn't have had much time because of the traffic. I mean, I, I would have had an hour, an hour or something. I could have got to Boomtown. That's it. So it really wouldn't have benefited the company or me by setting my ETD for like a 9.30, 9.45 departure time, knowing that I can only get one hour's worth of drive-in, which really only takes me to Boomtown. Or if I really wanted to push it up to the scales and then overnight at the scales, which unless I want to get inspected, I don't want to, I don't want to overnight at the scales. I don't, that's not something I want to do. Um, so, I elected to overnight or layover here in Sacramento, or I'm sorry, in McCarran. That's it. Parked my trailer, went and fueled my tractor, washed the windows, clocked out, cleaned up a little bit in here, and uh, and what have you. But nobody's sitting there pushing me to exceed or push my hours of service I am responsible for my hours of service so as the video title says hours of service who's responsible you're the driver you're responsible you're responsible for maintaining your hours of service and staying within the, the rules now we used to teach hours of service to our drivers, and uh, we still they still do. But we pushed it and let them know that the dispatch team will not understand that you don't have enough hours to complete a run. Meaning they're not tracking your hours. So if you show up to the window and you say, hey, what's next? 
they might give you something that is going to put you past your hours of service. That's where you speak up and you say, I can't do that because it's, I can't, I don't have enough hours. Now with Walmart, we control our hours of service. We tell them in the ETD how many hours that we have left for driving and how many hours we have left on our 70. Now the system can counts it for us. You can keep track of it as well, but the system right here, for example, says I have 20 hours left on my 70. And then it'll track how many hours I have on my 14. It'll track how many hours I have left on my 11. It'll track track how many hours I have left on my eight. Um, I could just refer to it very easy peasy, but it's still my responsibility. What if this thing goes down? What if this electronic log device ELD goes down? Who's responsible for that? Me. I got to get out a old school log book, fill out a log book and, and, and keep track of my, my, the rest of my day like that. So it's, you have to keep track of your day as you go. So you know where you're at and how many hours you have left. So let's go over a couple things. And I, I kind of said them, right? So you got the eight, the, what we call an eight hour rule. A commercial vehicle motor, commercial motor vehicle driver cannot drive more than eight hours, or be on duty more than eight hours, without taking a thirty-minute or thirty a rest period of thirty minutes or more within that eight hours. And I say rest period because it's not necessarily a meal period. You could go in and rest in the sleeper or you can just clock off, off duty, and you're resting. So that's one. So you have to take 30 full minutes, not 29, not 28. You have to take 30 full minutes of that rest period. Now, the interesting thing is that the DOT and the Federal Motor Carrier, they changed part of that rule to include on property time that you spend on property as that rest period. For example, if you're at a vendor waiting and you're there more than 30 minutes, that can reset your eight hour clock. Uh, you're on property at the DC and you're doing yard moves, that can reset your, your clock. Or you're typically off, you're, you're taking your meal. That's a 30 minute meal period. That will reset your clock. But that's what the eight hour rule is. You have to be uh, free of duties uh, or on property for 30 minutes or more to reset your eight hours. 11 hour clock. 11 hour clock is just what that is. It's 11 hours of drive time on the drive line. So this is where it's important. When you first get to a location, Go right to your hours of service and update that. Don't get out, walk around, do all this other stuff, go and knock on the door, say hello. No, update your hours of service. Get off the drive line. That is going to save you and give you more time to drive than letting it clock down. Because the thing that they can't do is they can't edit any drive time. So if you have drive time on your ELD, it stays as drive time. You need to edit that as soon as you get on. You got to go from driving to on property, driving to yard move, driving to off duty, whatever it is, get off of driving right away. Save that time because what I'm going to talk about next is your 14. Okay, 11, 14, there's three hours difference in between there. And you want to keep all your 11 in your pocket so that you can drive as many hours. The other night I said I drove 10 and a half hours, but I was on duty almost 14, right? So it's because I, I hit that, 
arrive button and I get off of drive the drive line right away. All right. So the 14 hour rule, 14 hour rule is you cannot work past 14 hours. Once you say start my day or clock in, however your system set up, once you start your day from that time, that's your punch in to the time you punch out or end your day, 14 hours. That's it. That's all you get. That includes meals. It includes everything in that 14 hours for that day. Okay. So you've got to monitor that as well. You've got to monitor your 14 hours, how long you've been on duty, and then your 11 hours of drive time. Now, somebody asked me a question uh, last week. I think it was last week. I was stuck in traffic on the Donner Pass. I think it was my last uh, Friday, my Thursday night. This is my go-home night. And I woke up to Friday morning with snow, right? Um, couldn't I have used the 16-hour rule? Now, the 16-hour rule is for uh, short haul. It's an exception. I want you all to, if you don't already have one of these, get one of these books and you can you can look at it it's a federal motor carrier safety regulations uh playbook okay uh, it's a pocket book this is a good uh, green one um it, it outlines the short haul exceptions so i couldn't use that as it but i could have used adverse driving conditions adverse driving conditions and or emergency another one of them not that one they're two different ones but emergency conditions but adverse driving conditions i want to just kind of read that one out loud and i don't want to take too much time on this but um adverse driving conditions and i'm going to read from the book so that you know i'm not saying it you know i'm not paraphrasing except as provided in paragraph h2 of this section a driver who encounters adverse driving conditions as defined as th uh, in 395.2 and cannot because of those conditions safely complete the run within the maximum driving time permitted by 3953 and 3955 uh, may drive and be permitted or required to drive commercial motor vehicle for not more than two additional hours beyond the maximum time allowed to complete that run or 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 to reach a place offering safety for the occupants of the commercial motor vehicle or security for the commercial motor vehicle and its cargo so what that's saying is you can complete your run as long as your run would be completed under normal driving conditions had that adverse driving condition not occurred now the other part it says in there about a safe location um, a lot of senior drivers will know this it's called safe harbor um, you you can find a safe harbor uh, location to get to in order to park for the night or to to get uh, towed or mechanical work or whatever it is but keep in mind you can't drive for another hundred hundred miles that's not what they're taught then that's not what they're saying they're not saying you can continue driving you know because your run normally would have went on for another you know four hours and you got caught in this you're gonna drive for another four hours no you can't finish you get two hours and that's it if that would have got you to your your location now that night I could have got here in two hours from where I was it's an hour drive down the hill now the other part of that is to get to a safe location safe and secure and I think I talked about this safe for who and and it's gonna be open for judgment right the CHP or the DOT they're gonna look at it and go I think it's safe 
you just could have parked there. I wouldn't have hassled you there. There's the gray area. So be careful with that one. Okay. So um, now adverse driving conditions. I'm going to go to the definition of adverse driving conditions because you can't just arbitrarily use adverse. Oh, it was adverse driving conditions. Oh, there's a lot of traffic like I hit today. A lot of traffic, a lot of traffic, officer. I, I got to use my adverse driving conditions uh, for today. Adverse driving conditions does not apply to rush hour traffic. Just putting it out there, does not apply to that. Now that accident that shut down the highway, that applies because that's not normal. Well, let's get it real. It's normal, but it's not known and it's not expected and it's not planned. Traffic at rush hour is known expected maybe not planned for the people that are in it but people that are part of transportation plan for uh, high traffic areas right so adverse driving conditions it says right here means snow sleet fog or other adverse weather conditions a highway covered with snow or ice or unusual road or traffic conditions none of which were apparent on the basis of the information known to the person dispatching the run at the time it was begun or the driver be, as the driver began so the weather obviously right um, but traffic unusual road unusual road or traffic conditions A big rig flipped over on the uh, 80, blocking all three lanes is unusual. It's not expected. And you wouldn't have known that at the time of dispatch. So yes, I could have used uh, some of that for that. All right, so covered the 11 hour, the 14 hour, the 16 hour is just for short hauls, um, eight hour. 10 hours, you guys know this, right? 10 hours is your 10 hour mandatory break between uh, your punch out to your punch in, your layover, basically your 10 hour layover. You have to have 10 hours off. Now, if you're doing sleeper berth, then please read through that book. Uh, it outlines how many hours you can be in the sleeper berth and how many hours you can be in the passenger seat um, and how to break it up if you're trying to break it up, okay? So again, go to the book uh, about that. 34 hour reset. And again, I'm doing this for anybody that comes across this video that doesn't know anything about hours of service. So uh, <laughs> you already know it, you think you know it all? Um, great, right? 34 hour reset. 34 hour reset is basically, it's uh, you have to, at the end of your week, take, a full 34 hours off. This is where some of our drivers would get into problems is they clocked out at 10.01 and then uh, they clocked in um, 24 hours is, is uh, 10 a.m. Okay, so then uh, and they were gonna come back in I'm trying to do the math, sorry, at uh, 8 o'clock p.m., two days later, okay? But they didn't, they, they clocked out at 10.01, but they clocked in at 8 o'clock. They didn't get their full 34. One minute counts, guys. One minute. You can't work, right? You, you've got to know when you clocked out. And some of these ELDs, the systems out there are like really second, the seconds on there, sensitive. So if you clocked out at uh, at 10.01 in 20 seconds, and you clock in at 8.01 in 10 seconds, you didn't get your full 34 either. So you gotta be very careful with your ELD and really uh, how many hours of service you have. Now with us here at Walmart, 
man, we get two full days. We're not really pushing that 34 hour reset. Oh my gosh, I gotta do the math because we're getting full two, two, um, two days, sometimes three. All right, so that's your 34 hour reset. 60 and seven and 70 and eight. 60 hours maximum in seven consecutive days and 70 and eight consecutive days. Now, the company has to designate how they're gonna have the drivers work. Are they gonna work 60 hours a week? Are they gonna work 70 hours a week? When I was at my previous, it was always 60, 60, 60. They're not gonna go over 60, period. Well, COVID hit, and guess what we did? We upped the ante and said, okay, because another part of it is some of these guys were coming in on days off and then weren't able to finish their scheduled runs. And by going into a 70 and eight days, they gave them more hours. And then mysteriously, they were able to start finishing their runs for the week. Helped with staffing, helped with everything else. But you get more hours, and you know they were able to make more money because we're giving them 10 extra hours to work so i don't know why they'd complain but um some of them didn't want to work 70. some of them only wanted to work 55 or 60 no more than 60. so um but uh, it is what it is right so you cannot work more than 60 hours in seven consecutive days or 70 and eight consecutive days, but the company makes that decision and then we have to adhere to it, okay? So again, watching how many hours you worked in those eight consecutive days. Not very hard for us because again, the most I think you're gonna work is six days. And if you get 70, over 70 in those six days, I'd be surprised. Because that means you're working 14, 14, 14, 14, and you know, I mean, you're really pushing it. Like I do. I'd be surprised if anybody got over 70 in, in, in five days. I'm not saying it can't be done. It's just, it's going to be very difficult to do. Um, what else on hours of service? The last thing, hours of service. If you work for another company, those hours count against your hours of service. Did you know that? If you're getting paid to work, even if it's not driving a commercial motor vehicle, I don't care if you're flipping burgers at Mickey D's and driving a truck on the side, or you're working at Mickey D's on the side while driving a truck. The hours that you work at Mickey D's count against your hours of service and what you're available for. Did you guys know that? The only hours that would not count that would be considered work or possible work is volunteer work. Where you're volunteering your time and you're not being compensated for that. You know, you're, you're working for... Uh, Habits for Humanity, um, Habits, something like that. Um, you're doing some kind of charity work, working for the church, doing whatever, whatever. That is volunteer time, doesn't count. You work another job where you're getting paid, that counts against your hours of service. How are they going to find out? Why risk it? So, especially if you're tired, because what's going to happen, if you're overdoing yourself, you get in an accident, and gosh forbid, you, you, it's a serious accident, and, and you kill somebody, or seriously hurt somebody, seriously hurt somebody, they're going to do the investigation, and then they're going to ask, 
a whole bunch of series of questions. How many hours was he working? How, what time did he start? What time did he, what time did he end his day yesterday? What time did it, you know, why is he so tired? What happened? No, he wasn't. He was only working like he was only on duty for us for eight hours. This is his Monday. Huh? Hmm. Okay. So what else was he doing, or she doing? They're gonna dig into it, and they'll find out that you're not being forthcoming with your hours of service, and that can come back and. We can be held personally liable, and the company can go, nope, sorry, we're not gonna, that's not our fault, to, you know. We're, we're not standing by that employee. I'm not gonna fight for him. So you've got to make sure that you, even if they're, the lawyers are going after the company, the big name, they might come after you personally as well, and you might not have much, but they're, they're gonna hit you where it counts, and that's your back pocket. If not, just in the lawyer fees. So, be careful if you're working more than one job. We've got to be sharp. If you do not feel ready, get off the road. If you do not feel that you got enough rest, tell somebody, hey, I don't feel like I got enough rest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a nap. And if it's two hours, you take a two-hour nap. It is what it is. Okay? But save yourself and save other people. It's Phil from Walmart. Right, I'm trucking. Let's see what they give me tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone.